Gurren Agath. Um, right, this comes down to, it's straightforward, we're talking about cash flow, working capital for businesses, and we all welcome this legislation and see the necessity of it, you know what I mean? Well, we all come from places that are absolutely reliant on SMEs and micro enterprises. They're the people that we know in the community that provide employment to other people in the community. And We've just, I don't think I need to go into it in relation to the domestic and global hit that businesses and we have taken as a society, and we need to ensure that we can come out of this. And the only way that we can come out of this is by supporting those businesses that were viable before. Okay, so we have people and businesses, and yes, some of them were already de dealing with uh, difficulties from beforehand. I think it's fair enough, as some other deputies have stated, that you're never going to find a solution in a banking sector that is utterly reliant on profit, and that's fair enough from a business point of view, but it's not able or willing to do what we need it to, to do at this point in time. We have the difficulties we've had with the restart grant. Obviously, there was a number of people who couldn't qualify on the basis that they hadn't paid rates. There's a significant amount of people who found it wasn't sufficient money to get them back up and running because it was based on their rates. And while we've had some solutions in around people that are self-employed, there are still difficulties and, and it's straightforward. It just isn't enough. It's not washing its, its face. Um, but if we deal with this legislation, if we deal with microfinance loans, um, Sinn Féin have an amendment in on this, but really the power lies with Minister English, with the Tánaiste and with the government. It comes down to the fact that um, it's about interest rates. It's already been mentioned uh, by many. We're talking about interest rates sometimes of people having to pay 4.5%, 5.5%, and sometimes higher. And while no more than people at times have to go to loan sharks and are charged extortionate rates, the fact is if you need to get money in order to keep your business going, you're willing to do that. But it's not necessarily the support or what they need. We definitely need for specific businesses to look at grant aid, but in relation to we need if we can take loans down from from Europe and if we are getting them at a negative interest rate and um, if we are now looking at the possibility of uh, a Europe wide um, let's say recovery and fiscal stimulus we need to ensure that we can get inadequate um, and a fair access to, to these sort of monies and that we can provide them to businesses in the way that they need. And some of that will be grant aid. There's many businesses that won't be able to reopen. They are caught in situations. I, I think other deputies have already mentioned the fact that uh, here we have people in the arts sector, people who are looking at no possibilities that they will be able to operate gigs or major gigs or anything within the near future. So we will have to have bespoke solutions. But the big thing is we need to have ensure that we are able to give people as close to zero you know, particularly as close to zero interest rates, we need to ensure that the risk assessment is streamlined, particularly when we're talking about businesses that were viable beforehand. So we can foresee into the future that these businesses will be viable into the future. So we have to protect them now. It would be a lot more costly if we let these businesses go to the wall, if we don't um, if we don't introduce a stimulus, if we don't catch them before they fall, it will cost a hell of a lot more to create new jobs, to put new businesses back in place, and we will have to pay. If we don't pay to keep these businesses open, we'll be paying through social protection and through other, th and through, um, other costs. And that's before we even talk about the societal damage that that, that may cost. Um, so. I spoke to a woman last night and she spoke about making an application and in fairness I think people will only commend the local enterprise offices on the work that they've done but she spoke about the fact that um, the repurposed Brexit loans while they were welcome when she tried to apply that she found that the payback mechanisms she found that the interest rates were actually a lot worse than when she just went and found uh, her own credit through banks which is far from perfect and in fairness to her a huge amount of her cost and um, it's from a small 
it's from a small business, uh, a hairdressing business, and she carried out the works from a point of view of being able to operate best practice as regards uh, physical distancing, combined with the added extra cost that she has from ensuring everybody is, is healthy and maintaining a, a cleanliness that is absolutely necessary from in infection control. So look, people like this really need to be helped out. It, it, you know, it, throughout this island, throughout this state, we have people, we have towns like such as Dundalk and Drogheda that need these sort of supports. See, if we don't have them, we are going to have a huge amount of people who are going to hit the wall, and the impact that that's going to have on all of us is going to be spectacular. So we need to stop it before it starts. So the way I see it is we need to streamline the risk assessment. We need to ensure that we can give people for loans like this, that we can give them as close to 0% interest rates as is possible. And again, I am leaving this with Minister English and with the Tornishta, that they have the power to bring this to Cabinet. We need to ensure that it happens. That's the reason why more people haven't applied for these loans. But there also are difficulties even for those that can in relation to the fact that it just needs streamlined. Uh, it's, just, it's, it's, as, it's as simple as this. Combined with that, we need to ensure that the July stimulus programme contains an adequate response, that we do accept that there are going to be different resources needed for different uh, sectors of society, for different business sectors. We are going to have people who will not be looking at um, full reopens, that they'll only be looking at partial work or no work into August, September, October and further. And we need to ensure that they don't go to the wall. These businesses are the people within our community. They employ other people within our community and we need to back them because if we don't, we will be going for something that is even far worse than what we dealt with back in 2007, 2008 to, and, and right through in what people term the age of austerity that we certainly don't need to be going back to. So what we need need to do now is we need to ensure that we give people the working capital to operate the businesses that were viable before and will be viable bef again. And we need to ensure that employment is maintained and that we can put our society back in action. And if that requires that we get the proper resources and supports, not only domestically but also from Europe, that needs to be done. We also need to tackle the other issues that have already been mentioned here in relation to the insurance fiasco that businesses are dealing with and the fact that we really need banks to play a ball. Girl,